Hi, welcome everyone. My name is Kimberly Alonzo, and I am the Welcome Center Manager for our PACE New York City campus. Today, I am so excited to speak with all of you about all things PACE. I'm going to chat about our Pleasantville campus, our New York City campus, our application process, and just all of the great fun things happening here at PACE. But to start off our presentation, I'll share a few fun facts about me. Starting with, I am also a PACE alum. I graduated from our New York City campus in 2013 with my degree in Communication Studies, and I minored in Political Science. I'm also currently a graduate student at PACE, studying for my Master's in Public Administration. But to dive into PACE's history, starting all the way at the beginning, PACE University was founded in 1906 by two accounting brothers who were looking to help their friends pass accounting tests. So they started writing accounting textbooks, they were having classes, they thought, why not found a university? And then fast forward over 100 years later, today, we're a private multi-campus university, and down here at our New York City campus, we have about 6,000 undergraduate students who call this campus home. And then up at our Pleasantville campus, about 30 miles north from here, we have about 3,000 undergraduate students who call that campus home. Now across our two campuses, we have over 100 different majors, minors, and programs to choose from over 100 different student clubs and organizations to join, and we have one of the largest internship programs across the New York metropolitan area. But for our conversation, and while you're in this point of the application process, something you can already start thinking about is your PACE path. This is a customized four-year program for success centered around three different pillars. First pillar is your academics, as I'm sure that's obvious. Second one is your real-world experiences, so that makes sure that you explore a whole lot professionally before you graduate. And the third one is your dedicated mentors and advisors. And since this is a path, that means it grows. So you start off picking a major, taking classes, you might study abroad, pick up a minor. But say your path, it takes a curve on you or a bend and you want to change either your major or maybe the whole industry that you want to work in once you graduate. But no matter where your pace path takes you, curves, bends, or just how different it is from another student's path, the goal for everyone is the same. And that's success both as a pay student and after graduation. So that means finding out everything that you love doing, knowing what you don't want to do, because that's equally as important. This way, before graduation, you know where you want your path to take you. And so starting with academics, the first pillar of your PACE path, something that our students enjoy across all of our schools is an average class size of about 20 students. That class size average, it starts in your freshman year and only continues to get smaller into your senior year. So that means you're never in lecture halls with hundreds of students where your professors don't even know who you are. But speaking of those professors, they're all always that. They'll never be teaching assistants or graduate assistants, and over 90% of them will have a PhD or the highest degree in their field of study. But speaking a little more specifically, about our schools, starting with our Dyson College of Arts and Sciences. That's home to some majors such as biology, chemistry, communication studies, film and screen studies, forensic science, philosophy, psychology. We have all of our performing arts programs in that school, and they have 50 different majors total. But say one of the majors I just listed is not something that you're interested in studying. Our Dyson College is still an important school for all of our students, because every PACE student takes about 44 to 55 credits from our Dyson College in order to graduate. That ensures that our students are receiving a strong, well-rounded liberal arts education, not only just in their major, but in multiple different fields and majors. The next, we have our Lubin School of Business, and that's a special school to us because, as I mentioned, we were born as a business school. I'm sure you all remember Counting Brothers, Books, Tests, PACE University. Fast forward again over 100 years later, Today, we're among 3% of universities that are accredited as both a business and an accounting school worldwide. So for all of my students interested in business, accounting, finance, marketing, management, advertising, arts and entertainment, our Lumen School has all of those different majors and programs. Then we have our College of Health Professions, and we have two different majors within that school. We have our Health Sciences program, which is offered across both of our campuses, and then we have our nursing program, where our undergraduate program is home up in our Pleasantville campus. So for all of my students interested in our nursing program, I do recommend checking out our Pleasantville campus, seeing that all they have to offer, because our nursing students, they will start their freshman year in nursing classes, 
and in their sophomore year, they already have those opportunities to explore different clinical experiences. So that's giving them experience in the nursing field already before, a year before students in other universities sometimes have that experience. Then we have another really important school for all of our students at Pace. That's our Seidenberg School of Computer Science and Information Systems. I say that's an important school for all of our students because no matter what industry you want to work in or what major you're interested in, what those all have in common is they all require technology. I'm sure everyone knows that, so for that exact reason, we have every student take about one to two courses from our Seidenberg School in order to graduate. And for my folks interested in our Seidenberg School, our students go on to work in career fields such as cybersecurity, hacking, robotics, game design, design thinking, programming, all before they even graduate. And then last, for our undergraduate schools, we have our School of Education. We have three programs in our School of Education, and our students often get experience in classrooms as early as their freshman year second semester. That can also be a year before students in other universities get those opportunities or those experiences. And for my folks who maybe are not so sure what major they're interested in, we also have a PACE path for you as well. Now some folks know it as undecided, but at PACE we like to say exploring majors, and I actually came to PACE as an exploring student. And that's because I had a whole bunch of hobbies and passions and interests, and I wasn't really sure professionally where I wanted to take those. And a class that helped me out that every student at PACE takes was UNV 101. That class is really where your PACE path starts off. And for us exploring students, not only does that give us the chance to learn how to acclimate to college, to life on a city campus, or any campus, but it really gives you the chance to build a framework for where you want to see your PACE path going both academically and professionally. So by your first day at PACE, you already are on the ground running and exploring all of those interests that you have. And I can't move away from the academic side of your PACE path without discussing the Honors College. This is an invite-only program, and students are invited as an incoming student. But if you're not invited at the point of admission, it is a program that you can transfer into, and they'll just consider your freshman year grades at PACE. But the perks of actually being an Honors College student, some of them, they have a guaranteed minimum scholarship, they get earlier registration for classes, living on campus, if that's something that students choose to do. But that small average class size I was mentioning of about 20 students. Within the Honors College program, students will take eight courses in order to fulfill it, and those class sizes are even smaller, simply because you're just with your honors peers and an honors professor. And this is a program that's offered to all of our different majors, so you don't have to worry that it's exclusive to just our business students. And another great way to explore academics through PACE is by studying abroad. After your first full year at PACE and with a 2.5 GPA or above, students can study abroad in over 60 different countries. They can study for as long as a year, for a semester, or for even as short as a week or two through something called a travel course. So we're really making sure that all of our majors have different opportunities to study abroad because it gives you the chance to not only explore different cultures, but learn with different communities. Also, it can be not only the same cost as studying at PACE, but can be even less. And now this, it might seem like it's so far away to start thinking about that degree after undergrad, but if you're looking at any of these industries or professions where they look for that second degree, it's already something that you can start thinking about at this stage in the process. It's not a decision you would have to make until your junior year at PACE, but we do have over 35 options for combined degrees, so that gives our students the opportunity to save both a year of time and money. So not a decision you have to make right now, but just something you can think about as you're in the application process. And speaking about the future careers, internships, well, we'll move over to your career and internship side of your PACE path, because your time as a PACE student it's more important than you just taking some credits or classes in order to graduate. And I'm sure it sounds important to explore a lot professionally before graduation, but I'm sure you're wondering what those opportunities actually are. So just to highlight a few of them, our students have the chance for different on-campus jobs, research and shadowship positions with professors, as well as obviously career and internship opportunities, and they even can explore volunteer experiences through classes they take or clubs they participate in. But as I'm going on about all those opportunities, and as I mentioned before, our internship program is one of the largest across the New York City area. 
I'm sure that sounds like a whole lot of opportunities to navigate. So if you're asking yourself, how are students navigating all this? It's all through career services. Now this is actually in the presentation where I kind of like to step back, put my alum hat on, and mention when I was in your shoes and I was considering undergrad schools, the reason I chose PACE was for our career services program. So that's the first place when people ask me, what should a new student do? Where should they go? I say, day one, run on over to career services. Now I know that's probably not where people go after they move in, so I can give you a little preview now, today, of what happens once you run on over there. And the first thing they do when you get to career services is they pair you with an advisor. This advisor is someone who, based on what you're studying, is an expert in the industry that you want to work in. So that way, when you sit down with that advisor, they can help you tailor your resume to a position you're applying to. They can help you make your cover letter look perfect, your LinkedIn look great. That way, say you get the opportunity for an interview, they can help you prepare for that as well. Whether that's anything from what you should wear to what you should say, or just making sure that your social media looks perfect, they help you with all of that. But you'll probably be looking for interviews and employers, so we do help you find those as well at the career fairs that we host across our two campuses. We also have recruiting events, employee spotlights, and we even take our students on field trips to offices that are around our two campuses. So you can see what those different work environments look like up close. But as I'm going on about jobs and internships, I'm sure it sounds great, but you're probably asking, well, who's actually hiring pay students? And besides these companies and logos up here, something to think about is the real estate beyond our two campuses. So looking outside of the New York City Five Boroughs and thinking about Rockland County, Sanford, Connecticut, upstate New York, northern New Jersey, when you Google that piece of real estate, what you'll see is the top Fortune 500 companies and even the top 100 companies that you folks want to work for, they're our neighbors. But that's four years away, or even more years away for some of our younger viewers. So it's not exactly what you're thinking about right now. So I would like to introduce to you some current Pace University students who can share a little bit more with you about their current Pace path. Hi everyone, my name is Veronica Cabrera and I'm currently a first generation senior communication studies major here at Pace with a minor in sociology and anthropology. Being a tour guide is not all that I do on campus though. I am involved in a few clubs and organizations. I am a member of our advertising club along with our marketing association and active minds here at Pace along with our queer society and programming and campus entertainment board at the university. Uh, I've also served as a peer leader and peer mentor for the first year experience office where I was basically helping first year students with their transition from high school to college, which was a really great opportunity to make these connections with students. During my sophomore year, I also interned at DKC Public Relations in their hospitality and lifestyle department, where one of my main jobs was sending PR packages to celebrities like Taylor Swift and Cardi B, which was really cool, closest I'll ever be to them. Uh, during my junior year, I interned at DoSomething.org, where I was their special projects and events intern. One of the biggest uh, campaigns that I worked on while there was our Get Out the Vote boot camp, where we got over 100,000 people registered to vote across the country for the 2016 presidential election. During the second half of my junior year, I actually went away to Barcelona, Spain, where I was studying there for four months. Not only was I taking communications courses, I was also volunteering some of my free time abroad at a local nonprofit raising awareness of the social injustices going on within Spain, giving me a completely new perspective of the country and culture. Shortly after coming back, I landed my third internship here in the city. I interned at Columbia University in their student services and residential life department, which really opened my eyes to the world of student affairs. Coming into my senior year, I started looking at grad programs to continue my education after graduation from Pace. And it brings me so much pleasure to say that I will be pursuing a master's degree at Ohio University with a full tuition waiver scholarship. And I will be working alongside their residential life and housing department as a graduate resident director. Hi, my name is Akash Siram Reddy. I'm from Irvine, California. I'm currently a sophomore here at Pace University, and I'm majoring in the BA program for acting, which is also part of the International Performance Ensemble. I like to say my Pace path is pretty much built into my program, mainly because last year, my freshman year, 
My whole class got mixed and shuffled into two separate groups or ensembles. And we got a guest director where we got to devise and cre our, create our very own show from the ground up. And with these shows, we got to workshop them at the end of the year. And then last year, or this year, 2019, uh, we got to showcase these shows at 80 Greenwich, which is an off-off-Broadway venue. So we pretty much got to get our off-off-Broadway debut. Uh, next year, I'll actually be going to Barcelona to study at the International Arts Institute in Barcelona uh, with my whole class. So I'll be taking classical Shakespeare class as well as contemporary acting classes as well. Um, so very pumped about that. Uh, senior year, I'll actually be getting into smaller groups where we'll be devising shows based off of short stories for our devised showcase, followed by our senior showcase as well, where we'll be showcased in front of a bunch of casting directors and as well as agents. Um, other stuff that I've done here at Pace University is that last year I was a part of Pace Shakti, which is a Bollywood dance fusion group. So we did a lot of competitions, festivals, events, stuff like that. And this year, I'm actually a part of Yes Anderson, which is an improv troupe here on campus. We do have shows every other Friday. They are all free, so if you want to come out, you definitely can. Um, but besides that, too, I was a part of stage readings here at the Manhattan Theater Center in Manhattan, which is a great venue. Really crazy, because when I got there to the space, there were a bunch of pictures of Nathan Lane, Timothy Chalamet, bunch of other people that I really look up to as performers, got to see them there, uh, that they've done stuff there as well. Um, other stuff that I've done was this year in January, I was a part of Pace New Musicals Lab, which uh, is pretty much them workshopping new musicals for outside people. So uh, we got outside composers as well as writers to help write these new uh, shows that they wanted to create. And, and um, I got to know my director for that show pretty well that I ended up getting an uh, internship for Hypocrite Theater Company, which is a theater company she founded. It's a theater company for South Asian actors, uh, mainly for people of an ethnicity that doesn't get a lot of representation. So I do get to work with them for a show that's coming up that they're partnering with the New York Theater Workshop. And so thank you. That is just one example or two examples of some PACE paths. Yours might look exactly like our student PACE paths, or they could look incredibly different. The goal, it would still be the same. And that's success as a PACE student and after graduation. And just to share some numbers with you about our internship program, just last year, we had students complete over 8,000 internships with over 1,000 different employers. A lot of students, they found those opportunities through our career fairs, where we had over 400 companies visit us on campus just last year. But if they didn't find them on campus, they probably found them online through our internship program, where we host over 10,000 different employers. So again, really making sure our students, while they are students, are exploring a lot so that they know everything that they love and really have passions about and all the work that they want to do as students is exactly what they want to keep doing when they graduate from PACE. So now that we've talked a little bit academically and professionally about what it's like to be a PACE student, we'll talk about life across our two different campuses. And these are just some top reasons to consider our New York City campus. One of the obvious best reasons being that New York City, it would be your playground. But my favorite benefit about our New York City campus is that between our school classrooms, our offices, our residence halls, we're actually only about a five block radius around. So for us, we get to be this small, close-knit community across this giant city. We're not stretched across a borough like city campuses sometimes can be. So for my folks interested in living on campus, that means you get the benefit of exploring New York City, seeing the five boroughs, that when you're waking up and you're getting ready for those classes, something you never have to worry about is taking the subway to get to your classes. And speaking about living on campus, these are just some quick facts about the different opportunities for our students to live on campus. For our freshman students, about 74% of those students choose to live on campus, and they have the option of either 182 Broadway or Maria's Tower. For our upperclassmen students, about 40 to 60% of them live on campus. We have 33 Beekman and 55 John Street. So that does mean that we do have a strong commuter community across all of our different residence halls, and we have a bunch of different opportunities for students, whether they're living on campus or off campus, to be a part of our PACE community. And now that we've talked a little bit about our New York City campus, we'll talk a little bit about our Westchester campus that's located in Pleasantville, 
about 30 miles north from here, and as I was saying before, home to about 3,000 undergraduate students. Now this campus, it's also home to our Division II sports teams, so if you ever wanted to see our football team play, this would be the campus to visit. But say you saw maybe an event or a class happening on this campus, maybe a class that we didn't offer down here on the New York City campus, and you just had to take that. You definitely have those opportunities because we have shuttle buses going back and forth between our two campuses every weekday. So if you maybe chose to be a Pleasantville student, but you still wanted a day in the city for a class or an internship, you definitely have those opportunities. And as I was mentioning, these are the different Division II sports teams that we have on our Pleasantville campus. But for my folks interested in our New York City campus, we do have intramural sports down here as well. And speaking about different opportunities that we have on our both campuses that our students really love, one of them definitely is our over 100 different student clubs and organizations. These clubs range anywhere from intramural sports to different pre-professional, social, cultural, academic organizations. I'll step back again, put my alum hat on, and mention in my years at Pace, when I was an undergrad student, I was a part of our Model United Nations team. And being a part of that team, some opportunities I got was I got to take my work and present it at conferences all around the world and even receive awards and recognition for that. That's something that a couple different clubs at Pace can give you, that chance to travel the world. But something you get through all of them, no matter which ones you join, you get that very important chance to network. So that means meeting folks outside of your classes and connecting with people outside of your majors. You can host events for these organizations and even take on leadership roles. Say we didn't have a club, though, that you wanted on campus. All you would need is seven friends, and then you can be the founder of a Pace Club, which looks really great on your resume, I'm just saying. And in my opinion, getting involved on campus is just as important as getting an internship because it really gives you that chance to not only build your friend community, but it lets you grow a professional network before you even graduate. And one other thing that we love to highlight across our two different campuses are the different ways that we are being more environmentally sustainable. For my folks interested in studying environmental sciences or environmental studies, I will shout out our Pleasantville campus, and I really recommend checking them out and seeing across their 200-acre campus all that they're doing to focus on those two different majors and be more environmentally sustainable. As you see this bird here in our presentation, he is just one of the many animals in our rehabilitation center and in our Birds of Prey exhibit on our Pleasantville campus. And again, for my folks interested in environmental science and studies, I really recommend also checking out our law school because that is really what they're known for. So if that's the industry and profession you're looking towards, again, it's something that you can think about at this stage in the process. And now shifting gears to the money conversation of everything, I'll start by highlighting last year, over 95% of our students did receive some type of aid from PACE, with PACE offering over $365 million in aid last year. That aid, it can be a combination of work study, loans, grants, scholarships. So what I can recommend for folks who are earlier in the process, I recommend visiting our net price calculator and our merit scholarship estimator, plugging your information into both, because what they do is they give you a better individualized cost of what a PACE education could be for you. And for my transfer students, we also have a calculator for you as well. It's our transfer credit calculator. And what that does is it helps you see which of your credits will transfer over. And for students earlier in the process of the application phase, these are our different requirements. One thing I do like to point out is that PACE recently has become test optional. So for students who don't want to submit their SAT or their ACT scores, that's not something that you're required to do. If you are looking at our Honors College, at endowed scholarships, or at our Pleasantville campus for athletics or nursing, those would be some reasons that you're still required to submit those scores. But even if you are, it's not the only thing that we're considering about you. We've always had a holistic application approach, and so this is just one more way that we're doing that. And once you do submit your application through our website or through Common App, what I recommend is reaching out to our admission office and just confirming with them that they have all of the materials required for your application so you don't find yourself waiting months for a decision because they were just missing, say, a letter of recommendation or a transcript. And then some different important deadlines for different stages of the process. If 
for my younger folks who will be applying for next year's, so not for fall 2020. If you're applying in next year's, we will have our early decision and early action dates open. And just to clarify what the difference between those two options are, early decision is a binding agreement that you make with PACE to attend if academically accepted. And if you were to apply by November 1st, you would hear back from us December 1st or the first week of. It's the same time frame for a response with our early action option. That's just the non-binding of those two options. And then for my folks interested in the performing arts, you'll notice that you have a separate application process. And I would say that submitting those materials a day before the application deadline, it's just too late. Simply because there's a lot of interview, pre-screen, audition requirements that come with any of the performing arts majors. Applying as early as possible, thinking about that early action date, that's what we recommend so that you start your pace path off on the right foot. And then we have a regular decision of February 15th, as well as enrolling admission of up to two weeks before classes. No matter what major or program you're considering, political science, performing arts, any major, again, the earlier you apply, the better you start off your pace path. And then that last deadline up there of May 1st, that's actually an important deadline for everyone in the process and for all of your years at PACE. Because if you're considering living on campus and you deposit by May 1st, that guarantees you on-campus housing. I like to specifically point that out because I lived on campus all four of my years, so I definitely recommend it. And I didn't forget about that first date, FAFSA. I'm sure it's everyone's favorite thing. This is a little information for the process this year. So for younger folks not applying this year, just make sure that you note those dates and those deadlines will change. And for folks who are in the process kind of this year, as you're getting an aid package or you're being offered financial aid, I would really recommend checking out our financial aid website and seeing all the different webinars, tools, resources that they have. So as you're being offered a financial aid package, you can make sure that you're accepting what works best for you and your family. But in conclusion, today I've talked to you folks a little bit about your PACE path. You're customized for your program for success. Talked a little bit about our life across our two campuses, our career services program, financial aid. And as you folks are having more questions about the application process or about anything about PACE, please feel free to reach out to our admission office and our welcome centers because we would be more than excited to answer those questions. And hopefully, we look forward to seeing you on campus in the future.